We had a very interesting hearing on women and climate change and got the opportunity to ask the Commissioner Hidegar her view on the topic. In your opinion, how is the gender dimension relevant to climate change policies? It's very relevant. I have seen in different parts of the world how the women are affected the most. I gave the example in there in Bangladesh when the cyclone, cyclone hits, how the women stay back in their houses because they are not allowed to go out without their, their men. Uh, and then the casualties on the women's side is much higher when cyclones hit than on the male side. That's just one example. But it's extremely important to think how can you communicate uh, the weather uh, forecast to the women. How can you take care? It not uh, that goes only to the man with a mobile telephone who who is out of the the village because he's going to work. I mean that kind of thinking is extremely important to have into our climate strategies and also, and not the least into the adaptation strategies. And uh, gender is not yet mainstreamed in the work of the EU on climate change. Is the Commission willing to introduce gender sensitivity in all climate policy and what could be the correct steps to achieve this? I think where it's most important that would be in the developing policy where we should mainstream climate thinking and gender thinking and they must go together into the, the sustainable development thinking. I think that when we are talking about how to change our energy system, things like that domestically in the European Union, I think we should take care not to make it too artificial because in many of these contexts it would be hard to find sort of one climate, uh, uh, one gender dimension. If we take when, when there are floodings now this summer in Sweden or in Denmark, it would be rather hard to find a gender difference there. So I think we should sort of do it where there is a, a very good reason to do so, uh, but the inequalities should be sort of handled through other policies, labor market policies, education pro policies, uh, and then I think that the gender mainstreaming with the climate agenda, that should be very much with developing countries, our developing country strategy. There is a lack, a lack of women in the scientific and technical fields uh, that are highly relevant to both mitigation and adaptation. How could the EU encourage women to study and work in these fields? I think it's very important to attract more women to the field of natural sciences uh, because no matter how we turn and toss it, that is through the natural sciences that we get the knowledge we need. And, and I think there that it makes a difference. If you're a woman, you might uh, find it easier to see the different angles related to women's conditions. So I think this is at least one thing we should do, try to attract more women into the natural sciences. And then of course also have more women in the leading positions. Yes. That would also help, of course. Uh, it was encouraging to hear that the Commission wants to do more in terms of gender responsive development, cooperation related to climate change. But it was frustrating to hear uh, that the Commission does not, definitely does not want to go into the gender aspects of mitigation and of climate policy in Europe. I think um, if we don't look into this, uh, we might have a, a policy that is less effective, in particular if, if we look at the long-term aspects. So we need to reduce emissions by, let's say, 80%. That means that our, our whole societies will have to change and we need everybody to be involved in this. And therefore, we, we need to address women and men and the differences and the gender aspects within climate policy. Where the European Union really has an opportunity to be a global leader and in the forefront is making sure that when we come to Durban in a couple of weeks, um, they push for a strong climate financing commitment that is also gender aware and makes sure 
that when we are talking about the financing means uh, for helping developing countries to adapt and mitigate, um, that those really integrate gender equality as a cross-cutting issue. Um, there are strong opportunities for the EU member countries and the EC as an observer to push that in the ongoing discussions for the Green Climate Fund and obviously then make sure that the Green Climate Fund that is to be decided upon in Durban is one that is integrating gender as a cross-cutting issue from the very beginning and not just repeat the mistakes of other climate financing um, inst institutions and mechanisms that have either not integrated gender at all or only starting to treat it as an add-on belated and incomprehensively. Mm -hmm.